All right, so you've gotten codes P10A4 or P10A0. What does that mean? How do you fix it? How do you diagnose it? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video. This all has to do with your supercharger bypass valve. So if that's something you wanna learn about, stick around. Okay guys, so what is your bypass valve? Where is your bypass valve? And what does it do for your engine? Let's talk about where it's located. Super simple to find. First, remove your rear engine cover. Find the supercharger snorkel that bolts directly into the bypass valve. That's this piece of metal here and this black plastic housing with this uh, clip here. That is the bypass valve. And if you were to remove this snorkel, which we're gonna do in a little bit to remove this, you would see a butterfly valve located in the middle there. It looks like a miniature throttle body almost. So this is where your bypass valve is. It's super easy to remove. It's just these three screws right here. One, two, and three. And then these four screws here from the snorkel, you gotta remove all four of those. Once you have that out, this will remove off. Be careful not to drop this plastic uh, plate here. And then you can pull this whole thing out after you disconnect this plug. And super simple, takes five minutes to get out. Sometimes the gears inside of this can get uh, can kind of break, they can wear down and it can stop working correctly or it can just have an electrical failure of some kind resulting in it not working. Uh, so we're going to do a little test and see if it is indeed our problem and I'll show you what I'm going to do. For this job, you don't need too many tools. Um, you're going to need some T30, or I'm sorry, you need a T30 and you might need a T20 if you're going to take this stuff apart and that's basically it. This is a really easy job to get this removed so let's get at it all right first things first you need to remove the electrical connector from the uh, bypass valve and that's this one that just kind of plugs in right here and you know how to do these if you don't and you need to a refresher on how to remove these you want to push the pin in or plug the in to relieve pressure press down on this tab here and then back it out it's kind of hard to do with just one hand let's see here there we go all right so once you have that removed kind of get it out of the way there and what we're trying to do is be able to get a multimeter inside here and the problem is this line doesn't let me get my multimeter in there this is pretty stiff and i want to break it and it's a pain in the butt to get it out of there so we're actually just going to go ahead and remove this plus that'll allow you guys to check out the actual gears if you need to so you need a t30 we're going to remove three t30s from the actual bypass valve itself, one here, one here, one here, and then we have to remove these four right here. There's one, two, three, four. This whole thing will come out. Now be careful when you do this, this piece will separate from the bypass valve, so don't let anything fall down there. Suggest you also have a extendable magnet in case you can't really reach a screw or you lose one, this will come in handy. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all those removed and we'll take a look at it. Okay, we just finished removing all of the bolts holding this together. One other thing real quick, guys, wait for this to cool down to work on this. One, you'll get a false multimeter reading if the engine's too hot, so you wanna be nice and cool. Two, this stuff is really hot and you're gonna have your hands in here and you don't wanna get burned. But we've got all the screws out, as you can tell. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just start pulling this out. This, once again, just pulls off. We can just set that off to the side. It's got the little spacer attached to it. And then this just lifts off. You see there are some gaskets, they're in good shape. We don't need to replace those. There's that little mini butterfly valve for the bypass valve. And then we're just gonna peer into the depths of our supercharger. So let's bring this over and give it a test. Okay, so what does your bypass valve do for your engine? The best way to think about it is, is to think about it as your engine's diverter valve, if you're familiar with uh, turbo Volkswagen Audi cars. It's what controls the pressure going that, that's being built in your supercharger and how it's released. So what happens in your car, whenever you get on the gas, especially when you're going wide open throttle, what happens is that butterfly valve that's located in the uh, bypass valve will close all the way. And it should remain closed the whole time you are in boost. And that's what's building boost in the supercharger, you know, boosting your engine. As soon as you let off the throttle, that valve should open back up, which is releasing the pressure, but it's not just releasing it to atmosphere like a blow off valve would do. It's releasing it through that snorkel on top back into the supercharger. So it's kind of recirculating that air back into the engine, technically a little bit more efficient. So it's controlling basically the boost that's going and building and being moved in your supercharger for your engine. 
When these fail, if they if they fail close, that pressure has nowhere to go. That could potentially harm your engine. If it fails and it's open when it's not gonna be, when it's not supposed to be open, it's just not gonna build the amount of boost that you should be building. So you're not gonna get the most performance that you should be getting out of your bypass valve. So that's what your bypass valve does if you weren't uh, familiar with that. All right, we've got our multimeter set up. You need a multimeter, especially like a digital one like this that can read ohms to be able to do this test. Um, you have the bypass valve here. And what we're testing for are pins four and five. We have a five pin connector. And if you look on the far left there, you've got four and five on the far left of this one. So on this one, it goes from right to left, one, two, three, four, five. So we're gonna be testing the last two pins on the far left. And the reading we should get is 2.4 to 4.6 ohms. Um, so let's get in here and give it a test. I'm trying to do it to where you guys can actually see the multimeter. All right, so you can see there it's holding at 7.9. Well, there's 8.8 .8, and it's holding there steady 8.2 or 8.1 there. So mine is well outside of the parameters that it should be. So I have a bad bypass valve. That's what's giving me my codes. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to open this up and check the gears just so you're familiar with it. So uh, let me go get the right Torx bit and we'll get into that. Okay, so to check the gears and make sure they're not faulty, you just need to take off these six screws and they are T20s. So just get in here and take these out. And then this will come off. You just need to gently pry it apart. There is a gasket in here, so be gentle. And try not to damage the gasket. And then you can see in here, you have these two plastic gears. Let me make sure I've got these in focus. You've got this wheel and you've got this thing here. And if you mess with the butterfly valve, you wanna first, you wanna grab the butterfly valve and turn it and make sure that it's working without any kind of hiccups, resistance, anything that would you know indicate that it's jamming or not. There's resistance to it because there's a big clock spring in here, you can see, but it's nice and smooth. I've got no, well, I should say I got no issues with any damage to any of the gears. You've got these three. Uh, they sell rebuild kits for these on eBay that are with shipping, I think like $30, $40, which is a lot cheaper than a bypass valve. A bypass valve, I think, is like $250, which, of course, for me, that's the route I'm going to have to go down to fix my car. But be aware that there are the rebuild kits on eBay. If you search, like, I think it's throttle body repair kit Audi 3.0, you'll find it. I'll have a link for it in the description. That way you guys know what to look for. But that's how you uh, access this to check that out. And you just need to pull these off. That's as simple as that to fix these. Uh, these just come right off. Um, but, yeah. I'm gonna get this put back together and I'm gonna go order myself a bypass valve. When you're putting this back together, when you're putting this housing on here, you wanna make sure you tighten it like a drum. You don't go around, you want to go across. So I started here, went to that one. I'm only getting them very just kind of just snug. I'm not doing like 17 oogadoogas. Just gonna get it kind of snug with my impact here. And then I'm going to get a hand tool and tighten them the rest of the way. Okay, once you put your housing back on, this just goes back into the car the exact way it came off. Definitely inspect your O-rings, make sure they look good, make sure there's no cracks or damage. Um, and even I used some brake clean and cleaned up inside of this, but I am gonna have to replace this. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get this back on the car. Whenever you're putting this back together, get everything set in here, get your bolts where they need to go, get everything just a few threads finger tight first to make sure everything's in the right area and seated correctly. Then don't torque down one side and then the other because if you like torque these four down it's going to lift this up and then when you torque this down it might not get a good seal and vice versa if you get these three torqued down it'll lift this off the supercharger and then you might not get a good seal here so get everything started get everything hand tightened and then go around and evenly torque everything down i don't know the torque settings or i'm sorry i don't know the torque settings it's not gonna be crazy tight you know, don't send these home with an impact or anything like that i'm sure you can find the specs online i just don't have them because this was an unexpected job and the last bit to diagnosing this, 
This is your wiring harness that comes from the actual engine control uh, wiring harness, you know, that, that comes from your TCU that gives the bypass valve signals. If everything looks good and test out on your bypass valve, then you need to check this and you want to check pins one and three. And for that, that would be the far left and the middle pins and you should get five volts. If you're not getting five volts, you either have a break in your uh, wire somewhere or an issue maybe with the battery, something like that. So that would be the last thing to test. Once you're done with that, you can slide this back in here and get it connected. So for me, it's time to look into replacements. All right, guys, I know this is a short video, but this is a really common issue that plagues the three liter supercharged engines. Once again, that's P, uh, code P10A4, P10A0, and maybe some other variations, but what it'll read on the code is, my OBD11 at least, it said something to the effect of like intake air regulating flap or regulating flap for intake air or something to that effect, and that's talking about the bypass valve. But these codes here, if you search them on the Facebook groups, you'll see that it's just constant bypass valve issues. Luckily, it's a relatively easy fix, Unluckily, replacing the entire bypass valve is a little pricey. I think brand new, they're around $250. We're just, you know, I'm going to look on FCP Euro to see if they have any on there uh, to take advantage of that lifetime guarantee. Or I might give the guys that lifetime Audi a ring and see if they have any uh, used ones laying around. Uh, big shout out to Mark. Uh, that is uh, Savage S4 on Instagram. I should have his Instagram handle here. Follow him. He's a 3OT guru. He's helped out a lot of the C7 guys. He's got a uh, B8 and a half S4 or B8 S4. It, honestly, if it wasn't for him, I would not be bringing you guys this video. He literally walked me through every step of this and explained it all to me like I was three years old and dumb, which I basically was when it came to this. So shout out to Mark. Thank you very much for walking me through this so I could bring this video to everybody else. As always, guys, if you have comments, leave them below and I will try and get back to you as soon as possible. And uh, if you like the content and it helped you, like and subscribe. See you on the next one.